My first week in Hecla, one of my very first home visits was the Royal Alvarez. It was an afternoon filled with stories and pictures from a wide swath of travels. Tales of adventures navigating their way through Germany, encounters with locals in Cold War Siberia. It was not uncommon any given Sunday for Royal to tell me they had just gotten home from a cruise, or in the week in between, they'd been to Mexico and back. And after learning how Royal had left for college, military service, and first established his household in Minnesota to then seemingly all of a sudden pick up and move back to a little patch of land some might consider middle of nowhere, North Dakota. I had to ask him in jest, what would ever bring you back here? I was expecting some quip about soil quality or the peace and quiet of rural living. Instead, Royal paused, and after several moments of pondering my question far more deeply than I had asked it, Royal replied, I suppose it was church. I suppose it was church. It's that simple statement, spoken in Royal's own reflective style, I'd like to unpack for you today. First, the I suppose part. This was Royal's humble way of saying that he was not the one who got to decide his path in life or more boldly, the times he thought he did, he had fooled himself. Now each night, Royal went to bed with a full next day itinerary firmly lodged in his mind and woke up the next morning feet already on the ground, ready to run. Feet no grass grew beneath, hard work was a model to live by. And the Bible Royal believed in does not disagree. Keeping busy was part and parcel of our God-given design from the start. When the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. And the Bible advises you best get at it while it's still daylight. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work in the grave where you are going. We say, busy as a beaver. God says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. And it truly, truly bothered Royal whenever he saw the opposite in action. I went by the field of the slot hole and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. But Royal knew he could only do so much. He could try and keep his field clean, step in and help others when in need, but there was always someone eager to take advantage. The overgrown field and broken down walls of this world is a losing battle. And across the 18 or so presidential elections, he felt privileged to cast a vote in. Royal was of the firm opinion that the State of the Union only got worse after each. For everything Royal did, he left something undone. For every labor he threw himself into, there was some other he neglected. A harsh truth for us all, which, every once in a while, required a phone call out to the flax fields from Alvira.
The call? That's enough, Royal. <clears throat> Time to come home. A reminder he recognized he needed. Recognized that if he were left in control of his own life, all his hard work was meaningless. As the Psalms declare, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. You see, even if in your mind, all you're running about is just doing what needs to be done, the Bible says we are all actually headed the wrong direction. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. And as counterintuitive as it might seem, <coughs> to work as hard as you can actually contributes to the problem. <coughs> we have turned everyone to his own way. Meaning behind Alvira's call, Royal Come Home, was the call of the Lord who had given him that good wife. The Lord's call to stop and reflect on his busy, busy ways. For Royal to recognize he could not do it all. To return to his wife and children and together as a household turn to the one unchanging truth in a world no mere man could keep up with Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. This is where all the supposing stops. <coughs> this is where we get to the church part. For though Royal got up each morning, mind firmly set on what he was going to do, here in this place, Royal was recentered on the truth that his God was the one in control. And what more, that his God's plans were only Royals to discover as they unfolded. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Why out in the middle of nowhere in the Dakotas? Because in the midst of an ever encroaching world, encroaching even into the teaching of so many churches around him, Royal believed he found one place he was convinced remained faithful, a place he could play a humble role in keeping that way. All for the sake of keeping pure and resounding into his ears the only hope Royal had for his sins and yours. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The only supposing about it being Royal's own confession that it had to have been God's grace and God's grace alone which guided his missteps, how else does a man who does nothing but run end up sitting still a full 60 minutes each and every week to hear, learn, and believe the life-giving truth of the one who calls, be still, and know that I am God. Just as you all have today, gathered to hear the good news of Jesus ourselves. <clears throat> With so much to do and so little time across the three brief years of his public ministry, Jesus too was late to sleep and early to rise. Jesus ever wandering the fields, looking for work, work only he could do, on the hunt for lost sheep like Royal. 
me and you. Forgiving hearts like ours, broken by sin, with a tender call, that's enough of you trying to do this all on your own. Why don't you come and follow me? Not one drop of Jesus' labor in vain. Each drop of holy precious blood he shed from two planks of wood paid the full price for each and every one of your sins. Yes, all we like sheep have gone astray. Yes, we have turned everyone to his own way. But it was for that very reason that there on Calvary, the Lord laid on him, the innocent Lamb of God, the iniquity of us all. Whereby Jesus has secured for you an eternal dwelling place. At the moment of death, heavenly bliss. And in the end, a resurrection from the very grave we place royal into today. A resurrection where royal will stand back up on two feet again and hit the ground running. In a glorious new creation, I can't begin to imagine what there will be to do. Just as Jesus explained to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. Just as Jesus drove home, you best not doubt he means you. If it were not so, I would have told you. This gospel is that which allowed Royal to wait on his Lord's plans. For every problem, both in the world sphere and his own soul. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This gospel alone allowed Roy to wait on a day he was both prepared and longed for. The day he would receive the greatest call any man can hear. That's enough, Roy. Time to come home. Not for Malvira, but the lips of his Savior, Jesus. Thanks be to God, then. Royal listened. A loss for us, eternal gain for him, called home to an end of every labor of this life, called home to eternal bliss. I told you Royal was prepared. There's no reason you can't be. Jesus said, where I go you know, and the way you know. And if you don't, it's Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I told you Royal was more than ready and waiting. When he lost his big brother Elmer, whom Royal had spent his whole childhood following about. He asked me, when's my turn? His little cousin Marvin, Royal remarked out loud, why him before me? And when he lost his little boy Mark, with whom no one could keep up, who made his way across the finish line well before the rest. It was every promise of the Jesus who died and rose again for us all, which kept Royal running, trusting through faith alone his Savior's ways, clearly not Royal's, must be, have to somehow be for his eternal best. 
And now, Royals race finally complete. Is there any question in your mind why you're all here to sit still this half hour today? Yes, of grandfather, dad, a lifelong friend. Yes, for a grandmother and mom. But according to Royal's own wisdom and example, don't you suppose it's church? No supposing about it. Let the gospel you learn from Royal's own mouth be your pit stop the rest of your days until your course is run and Jesus calls you home too. I invite you to sing Royal's favorite, Just As I Am, in 388. 